Earth's surface is mostly water. Less than one-third is land. Nearly 40% of the planet's land surface is covered with what the American pioneers called a sea of grass. These are the Earth's grasslands. They are known as the pampas in South America, savannas in Africa, steppes in Russia and China, and the Great Plains in North America. In the United States, we call these tall grasslands America's prairies. Grassland is a type of ecosystem, a community of plants and animals that live together in the same environment and depend on each other for survival. The plants and animals of the grassland ecosystem thrive in this environment. The American prairie is one type of grassland. Prairies are flat or have rolling hills and are covered in thick, tall grasses, sometimes as tall as a person. These grasses sway in the wind, resembling waves on the ocean. And in spring and summer, the prairie is a kaleidoscope of color with more than 300 species of wildflowers. These prairies were once the home of millions of bison, or American buffalo. Great herds roamed the grasslands until the late 1800s, when hunters nearly wiped out the bison population. Their numbers have increased in the last century, thanks to protection efforts by the U.S. government. Colonel hunters, such as rattlesnakes and owls, hunt harvest mice at night. A spider spins a web in hopes of catching a meal, perhaps a butterfly. Birds, lizards, coyotes, and deer are just a few of the other animals that make up the prairie's complex food web. Humans also rely on the prairie for food. Today, fields of corn, wheat, and other crops cover most of the prairie, providing food for millions of Americans. When did the prairie form? How did this wide expanse of flat, grass-covered land develop? Let's take a look back in time. America's prairies were created by geologic events 65 million years ago. All of North America was once a level, forest-covered area. As sections of the Earth's crust, called tectonic plates, began to shift and collide, they created a ridge of mountains in the western part of North America, stretching from the Sierra Nevada north to the Canadian Rockies. When moist western winds blew inland from the Pacific Ocean, the mountains stopped this flow of moisture from reaching the middle of the country. Only dry winds reached the center, drying out the forests. The winds then picked up moisture from the Mississippi River, and this precipitation encouraged grasses to grow. The prairie was born. Ice was another important element in forming the prairies. About 18,000 years ago, glaciers covered part of North America. As the glaciers melted, they piled rock and clay over the land, along with silt, a type of sediment made up of tiny particles of rock. The climate is humid, with hot summers and cold winters. The prairie receives about 20 to 35 inches of rain a year, enough to maintain its fragile grassland ecosystem. If it rained more in the prairie states, over a long period of time, this land would become forest. 
If it rained less, it would become a desert. The swaying grasses of the prairie hide what lies beneath. Rich, fertile soil and a complex root system. This root structure allows the grasses to survive the harsh weather conditions that sweep through the Midwest. Tornadoes, cyclones, blizzards, electrical storms, and fires are part of the changing seasons on the prairie. They may seem destructive, but the fires that whip across the grasslands actually encourage new growth. The fire rages at hundreds of degrees, but a few inches into the ground, the temperature rises only a few degrees. Prairie animals burrow for safety from the fire. Ground squirrels and box turtles scurry away from the flames. When you see raging fire going across the prairie landscape, it's easy to think of that as a very destructive force, and in some sense it is. It uh, burns the existing vegetation to the ground. But really, I think of fire as a renewing force. Without fire, we would end up with this tangled mass of, of vegetation that would suppress the growth of many of the species. We would not have the rich, diverse grassland. We would end up with lots of trees. Fire burns off the top layer of the prairie, permitting more light, warmth, and moisture to reach the soil. Plant and animal life quickly return after a fire. Within days, green sprouts appear, animals poke their heads out, and the cycle starts all over again. For the prairies, plants, and animals, fire is as essential as rain and sun. Fires are capable of much destruction, but the growth they encourage is part of the cycle of life on the prairie.